Hi, welcome to Talking Texas Politics and Texas Policy. And this talk is going to be about voting and the importance of voting. And I'll be giving you some information uh, about democracy and the characteristics that define democracy. I'm gonna be giving you some websites of where you can find information and why voting is so important. So let me call up my little slides as I usually do. Let me see, uh, voting here. Let me share this one. Okay. Come on. Okay, there we go. There we go. Okay, so voting. Uh, and again, I'm Dr. Joe Marie Rios. I'm a professor of political science, recently retired from Texas A&M University, Corpus Christi. Okay, election cycle is upon us. We have a lot of elections. Well, a lot of countries have a lot of elections. Maybe we have more elections than most, but it's important. And this is why it's important. We have a republic. And what that means is a representative democracy. And so there are characteristics that define a democracy. So I've been talking about democracy kind of off and on, but uh, the one characteristic that defines a democracy more than anything else is the ability for us to go vote, to vote in free and frequent elections that you are not coerced in, in any way of, uh, what, of how you're going to vote. And because we have a representative democracy, and this is the important part, whoever we vote into office should be making the decisions on our behalf, on behalf of the Republic, on behalf of the country, not on behalf of themselves, the politician, but on behalf of the country and the people that they uh, represent or their constituents. And so it's basically a mechanism for accountability. And what that means is that if somebody that you feel is not representing you in the way that you like, you vote them out. You vote them out. That's the measure or the mechanism of accountability that we have as a representative democracy. Okay, who, uh, you know, who votes? As long as you're over 18, uh, you have a uh, residency, you're a US citizen, not residency, a citizen, you have to be a citizen. Uh, 18 years of age or older that you live in a county. I mean, there's uh, different qualifications or uh, residency requirements for each state, but basically, you know, you can vote if you meet all of the eligible eligibility requirements. Now, when you're looking at the variables about who are the people that vote at the highest rates, it's based on race, on education and on income level. So basically, if you are Anglo, you tend to vote at a higher rate. If you are, have a higher levels of education and they define higher levels of education of a, at least two years or more, you tend to vote at a higher level. Uh, if you have a higher level income, and um, that's kind of a nebulous thing, what is, where's, that, where's that marker right there? Uh, you tend to vote at a higher level. There's other, other va factors that you can look at, but these are the ones that they look at the most or the most often uh, when they're trying to decide who's gonna go, who's gonna vote, who is not going to go vote. They're looking at the electorate. They're looking at the, uh, the the voter eligibility rates. Okay, what's important is when people go out and vote, sometimes people vote because they have very strong affiliation to the party, their particular party, so they go out to vote. But more importantly, and this has been in the very, re very recent past, that people are saying, you know what, I my vote will make a difference. And you need to kind of look at it in those terms, saying that, yes, your vote will make a difference. So that this term called political efficacy is basically the feeling that one can affect politics by voting or other forms of political participation. Some other forms of polit political participation or things like, you know, uh, 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 joining uh, different types of campaigns and going, you know, uh, 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 contributing to campaigns, engaging in different political discussions, although right now the political discussions are very heated. You know, if there's one thing that I... I'm so worried about this country is that there is such a divisiveness that's been going on between the parties or because of the parties that we are not in a very good place. You know, there's a, a lot of polit political violence that I have not seen in a very, very long time. I would say since the 1960s when there was the social revolution, uh, a lot of the uh, civil rights type of thing, but we have not experienced this type of violence. And at that time, it was more peaceful violence. You know, it's not the it was not the civil rights uh, protesters that were violent. It was everybody that was violent against them. Now, violence, the gun, uh, the, the problems with the crime, problems with mass shootings. We've just had so much violence because of the very 
heated vitriol and political rhetoric that's been going on right now. But anyway, so, but we should be more civil. I mean, if anything else, I think we need to be more civil in the way that, that we communicate with each other because at some point we need to bring this country together. Okay, so each state has its own way of doing things. When it comes to voting, each state has its own way of doing things. So you need to know your rights. And I'm giving you some uh, some websites here that you can get in there. And they they do good. So the first one is the Secretary of State, the Texas Secretary of State. And the Texas Se Secretary of State is a public agency that has everything to do with the elections. So that's the website for that. The League of Women Voters is another one. And all of these are, the League of Women Voters is nonpartisan, but they give you information about where you need, what your rights are, where you can go vote, you know, uh, who's running in the elections, that type of thing. It doesn't tell you who to vote for. It just gives you the facts saying this is who's what's available. You know, this is your voting site. is how many people have been voting. It just gives you that type of data, very, uh, it's, it's data driven. Okay, so what's at stake when it comes to voting? Well, whoever we vote into office is going to provide the policy direction of how these laws are going to be coming out. And as I've said before, right now, this, the state of Texas has been a Republican state since 2002. According to the Texas uh, uh, University of Texas, uh, Texas uh, Voting Project poll, 53% of the people in the state of Texas don't like the direction that this state is going. And it, right, it's because it's being run by the Republican Party or everything that they're, that people are, are feeling, what they're witnessing is because of the laws that are made by the Republican Party. So again, that's what's at stake right now. It's up to you whether you want to change this or not. And the only way that you can change this is by going out and voting. Okay, so who who's, who's up for election in the state of Texas? When it comes to the Texas Senate, it's the lieutenant governor. And that office is held by a Republican. Right now, all of the offices are held by Republicans. All of the Texas senators, okay, we, the Texas senators, there's the majority of the Texas senators are Republicans. There are also Democrats, but the majority are, the, are, uh, are Republicans. Same thing with the House members. There are some Democrats, but it's the majority that are Democrat, that are Republican. The governor is running for office. Uh, right now, the governor has held, held that position since 2002, you know, has been a Republican. And this thing that I call the plural executive. So these are all the other offices that we vote in that help the governor run the state. And those include the lieutenant governor is part of the uh, of that group as well as the attorney general, which is a head uh, officer of legal counsel for the state, such as the general land commissioner, the state agriculture the Railroad Commission, I mean, there's there's many, and these are all people that share the responsibility of running in the state of Texas. So those are the people that are up for uh, election at this particular point in time. Not so much as senators because they run every uh, four years and they run on staggered terms. All right, so depending on who we vote into office, if it's been the Republican Party right now, the laws have been very conservative. If the Democratic Party is uh, in uh, in uh, office, if they're you know the majority party, the laws will come out more liberal. So it's just gonna depend on what you and what you want because this is your vote. You vote your conscience. There's been a lot of talk about election integrity and this has been going on since the 2020 election and what they were calling like the big lie that the election was stolen. The election was not stolen. There were all kinds of uh, accountability measures, all kinds of audits, all kinds of recounts. The election was not stolen. But let me tell you the way that it works in Texas so you'll know. I mentioned this office of the Secretary of State, and that's the one that uh, has everything to do with the elections in Texas. But before it gets to that point, in the state of Texas, every single county runs its own elections. Or, and, it's, uh, and that's called the county clerk. Like here in my area in Wessex County, it's called the county clerk. There might be one called the election officer, but here it's the county clerk's office that does it. That is an elected position. So there's 254 counties in the state of Texas, and uh, each county will run their own uh, their own uh, election. They will tally the votes from all the precincts, the little precincts within each county, and then they will send it all to the Secretary of State that has is appointed from the governor. So this uh, office of the Secretary of State is responsible for all of the elections. They work in conjunction with the counties. And so the counties will send them all of the ele elected votes, all of the counts, the census, the vote counting. 
and they will say, this is the way this county voted, this is the way this other county voted. And the uh, Secretary, Secretary of State will gather all of the 254 counties, all the votes from the 254 counties, and then they will tally that up. They will, uh, they will uh, certify the election and say, this is how Texas voted in this particular election. So that they have, they have a very important position to play. Now, there was a poll that came out, and this was just very recently, uh, just last week sometime, from Marius College. And so of the people of Texas, you know, 76%, 76% say that they approve and think this system is good. So it's not that we have a problem, but we want to keep it that way. We don't want to have the problems that they had in Arizona. We don't want to have the problems that they had in Georgia. We don't want the problems that they had in Pennsylvania. Leave Texas alone. Okay, when I say that democracy is in peril, this is what I'm saying that it's in peril because it is in peril. Right now, the legislators, this is what they're trying to do. They are trying to pass a law where the legislature has powers over all of the counties, census and the counting, that if they do not like the results of that election, that they can overturn the election and that they can put in the people that they want into power. So the interpretation of this particular uh, law that they're floating around, if you want to call it that, see, you know, if there's going to be any takers for this one, is that our vote would not count. Again, we would lose our democracy. That becomes an autocracy, a dictatorship. Is that what you want for the state of Texas? I can assure you, people do not want in the, that in the state of Texas or in any state of the United States. I would say, I would think. Okay, so what's the effect? Of, because um, then the reason I'm making such a big deal about democracy is I think it's very uh, important for us to remain a democracy. You know, there's nothing in the books that says we will always be a democracy. It's a test, it's an experiment. They call it the democratic experience. And there's many, many countries that have uh, had democracies. And these are basically like um, the developing countries, the third world countries that they lost their democracy because of uh, different of, of corruption or this type of corruption that the Texas legislature wants to uh, legitimize, that they're trying to make a law saying, yeah, this is fine, this is dandy. Well, no, it's not fine and dandy. Okay, so if our democracy crumbles, our economy will tumble. You know, uh, as I told you in the last section that I did, that I have two degrees in economics and I also have like an outside a third field in my PhD program uh, in uh, developing economies like economics of the third world and my area was uh, uh, Latin America. And so what I saw more than anything else and this was always a question that I had, why is it that a lot of these countries, they're right there, they're, uh, they want to be first world countries like industrialized countries like what the, the United States is, but they've never been able to pass that. They get up to a certain point in terms of their economic growth and they can't just cross over to the first world. They're still considered to be third world, or they're calling them newly industrialized countries. And so the reason is, and I had to think about this for a long time, is it that the economy is not doing well, or is it that the political system is not stable? And basically my conclusion was, is that the political systems are not stable. They're not stable enough. There's still too much corruption. And that's kind of where this United States is going. And um, I hate to have to say this, but believe it or not, guys, if we go on the same traje tra trajectory that we're on right now, we are going to become a banana republic. You know, and that saddens me more than I can ever say because we've always been, you know, the the the, the shining star for all of the world, all of the world. Do we want to lose that brilliance, that shine? You know, everybody wants to come to this country because we're the best. Can we maintain that? Can we maintain that we're going to be the best? It's up to you to decide. And I... Let me see. Okay, so this is the last one I'm going to do for, for this cycle. Uh, these uh, uh, legislature will start to meet in January again for uh, the next legislative session that they're going to be doing. If I see something that's kind of like, you know, really bugging me, I guess you can say, very contentious, if that's very contentious, I might go ahead and put some more uh, information on this. But I hope you enjoyed this little series that we have here and that it is hopeful, uh, helpful to you.